So that's that question done. Remember there's your conservation of energy. The energy at the top is equal to the energy at the bottom. The potential energy at the top is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom plus don't forget the 500 joules that was used up as friction, as energy. Now, Pearl has speed, velocity and acceleration as she slides down. Complete the table to indicate whether these quantities are scalars. Now scalars are size only. And the fancy name for size is magnitude. Right, so magnitude only. Scalars have size, magnitude and direction. So that's what makes them different. And again, if you're finding this, you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look at page 346. It's all on it. So complete the table and indicate with a tick whether these quantities are scalars. I have bad news for you. You have to learn this. I know that speed is a scalar. I know that velocity is a vector. And I know that acceleration is a vector. Learn them. Learning takes time. Practice makes study easier. Study the shape of the slide in the diagram. Well, let's have a look at it. There's it there. Sort of a curvy shape. Right? See the curvy shape of it there? Right? It says, consider Pearl's displacement and distance from the top of the bottom. Choose the correct statement below. Now, displacement and distance are very similar, but they are not the same thing. So she might have went uh, 5 metres due east from there to there, but she might have done 6 metres doing it. Fair enough. So the distance is greater than her displacement. One mark. Remember, when you get out of bed in the morning and you get back into the same bed in the evening, your displacement is zero. You may have travelled a huge distance in that time, but your displacement is zero. Last question. Now, graphs. Everybody can do a graph until they're asked to do one. I know this is a velocity time graph. How do I know that? Because there's velocity on the y-axis and there's time on the x-axis. It's a velocity time graph. And again, if you go to your notes, your mind maps, and to the quizzes that are put up, you will know that a velocity time graph gives me three things. And you should be writing this down. Velocity at time. Two, slope is acceleration. Slope, there is the slope, a positive gradient. Slope is acceleration. And three, displacement. Is area enclosed. Now, if you don't know those three things, you have to learn that. So once I see a velocity time graph, velocity time graph, I know I can read off the graph using the ruler. I know the slope, rise over run. And I know the displacement is the area under. And be careful, this one doesn't start from zero. Look, it starts at six. And it's also a strange, a strange um, scale, look. Three, six, six, three, six, nine, twelve. It's not two, six, look, it's three, six, nine, twelve. One, two, three, four. Do you see the strange scale up along here? Don't fall for strange scales. Take your time. Look at it. Two squares is six. So that from there to there is three. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Take your time, look at a graph. Now, let's do the, do the question. We know all we need to know. We'll look at the scales. Should be fairly easy. Use the graph to calculate the displacement. Displacement is the area enclosed. Of the car during this 12 seconds time interval. Now, be careful here. There are two shapes. That's why I've got my ruler, look. Do you see that shape there? That's a rectangle. And the rectangle is length by breadth. And do you see that shape there? That's a triangle. Half, 
half the base by the perpendicular height. So I have four marks to get here. So displacement equals area area enclosed. So that's equal to that area plus that area. Which is equal, now be careful, 6 by 12. Add on half times 12. Now this is where you have to be careful. What's that height? Look at the height. 6 from 24 gives 18. You see that height there? That height there is 18. Look, that's 6 there. And that's 24 up there. So that height is 18. So by 18. So 6 twelves, well 6 twelves, 6 1, 6 2, 12, 72 plus half, get the calculator out, half by 12 by 18. 108 plus 72 is 180 meters, 180 meters. So there's my first mark, there's my second mark, third mark, fourth mark. There's my, I got all four marks out of that. Again, getting back to the question, it's a velocity time graph. It's not a distance time graph. It's a velocity time graph because there's velocity on the y-axis and there's time on the x-axis. Once you see a velocity time graph, you write down the three things you're supposed to know. Learn it. Take time to learn. If you don't know these, you can't do the question. Then we look at the slippiness. Look at the area. Usually they start at zero, but this one starts at six. Also look at the strange scales. That area. And then the triangle. Half times 12 times 18. Mark. Four marks. Easily gained. Now, the car exerts a resultant force of 2250 newtons. Use the graph to help you calculate the mass of the car. Now, just go back to this one for a minute. Look. The slope is the acceleration. A rise over a run. Now be careful. Look, you see there's the rise there. And there's the run. So let's write down slope equals acceleration equals a rise over a run. Now there's the rise is 18 and the run is 12. Get your calculator out. 18 divided by 12. 1.5 meters per second squared. Meters per second squared. Meters per second squared. Remember, bring up that. That's the, they're all the same thing. All the same thing. So the, the examiner might write these in the, all these ways just to confuse us. Now we know the acceleration. Isaac Newton's second law. Unbalanced forces. Not equilibrium. Resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. Newton's second law. They tell us the resultant force is 2250 is equal to the mass times the acceleration. We only have to work it out. Look, getting back. See, if you don't know this, you can't do the question. If you don't know this, you learn it. You know it's a velocity time graph. Why? Because there's velocity and time. Mass times acceleration, 1.5. Now again, 6 is equal to 3 by 2. 6 over 2 is the same as 3. Look, there's my 6. There's my 3 and there's my 2. And I want the 3. So it's 2, 2, 5, 0. Oh, divided by 1.5 is equal to the mass. Now, in F equals MA, 
You should know that force is measured in newtons, the mass is measured in kilograms, and the acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. We know that's in meters per second squared. We know that's in newtons. So our mass is going to be in kilos. Look. Kilos. So get the calculator out again. 2250 divided by 1.5 is 1500 kilos. That's the mass of a car. It's one and a half tons. It's a sensible answer. One and a half tons. So it's 1000 500 kilos. All the kilos are already there. I'm not going to write it down twice because it's already there. There's Newton's second law. Resultant force is equal to mass by acceleration. There's this paper done. What have you to do now? You have to go through each question. What did you learn from each question? Did you write it down? Did you make a mind map of it? Did you make a mnemonic of it? Did you take time to learn it? Did you then print off this paper and try it? Did you then maybe in a couple of days time take the same questions and try them again? Practice makes perfect. Studying takes time. Work beats brains when brains won't work. Good night.